All right, I want to talk about color theory a little bit because as we uh, get into tweaking our photos in Photoshop and deciding what to place within the frame when we're taking pictures, it's good to think about how uh, colors are going to interact with each other and also how colors are going to affect our audience. So here we have our traditional color wheel, which was actually sort of, I guess, primarily invented by Isaac Newton when he noticed uh, rainbow spectrums coming out of prisms and he noticed that there was a progression uh, between one color on through and all the way back to itself uh, and so we have our primary colors yellow blue and red are the primary colors and when you mix those colors together say red and blue you get violet say yellow and red you get orange those are the secondary colors and then you have the tertiary colors which is when you mix a secondary color and a primary color so yellow and orange give you yellow orange etc so this is a very basic color wheel uh, but it gives you an idea of the range of the spectrum um, it can get much more nuanced as you change the tint and the tone and the shade which i'll talk about in a little bit as well as the hue and the saturation so uh, let's talk about hue and saturation hue is the term that refers to traveling around the color wheel as we shift the color we are shifting the hue. So as we travel around, I'm going through a pink to a more magenta to a violet at the moment. Uh, so hue is the term that refers to shifting that uh, color angle, as it is often called, uh, which can actually be described sometimes as a geometric angle, so like a 30 degree or 35 degree hue angle. Uh, but just to show you that there's that kind of slice, that range of uh, going around the color wheel and that's referred to as hue. Saturation is traveling from the middle outward in your color wheel and it's basically talking about the density of the color. How red is it versus how uh, unread is it? Is it more towards white or is it a deeper color is essentially what saturation is referring to. Um, I'm going to show you some color schemes, uh, meaning pairing colors together for effect. This is the most basic color scheme. It is, uh, well, I guess the most basic color scheme would be monochromatic, but uh, when we're talking about pairing colors together, if we go on the complete opposite end of the color wheel from, uh, from your chosen color, you get the complementary color. So this is a complementary color scheme down here. The violet and the yellow green, uh, sorry, red, violet, and the yellow green uh, pair together. This is a very kind of bold color scheme, very sort of disruptive, really gets your attention. Um, say the Riddler and Batman wore this color scheme for anyone who's a fan of old TV shows. Uh, again, it's attention grabbing and it can be distracting at times to use a complementary color scheme, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, an alternative might be an analogous color scheme, uh, which is more subtle difference, and people would refer to this as a harmonious color relationship. Uh, so you can see here that these colors all go together a little more smoothly. Um, I'm going to show you a picture now that uses an analogous color scheme. And that would be all the kind of similar yellows and oranges going on in this shot from the cab to her coat and even her face is kind of in the same analogous color range. And I actually manipulated the shot in Photoshop um, for that effect. So I brought down the cab into this more kind of gold range as opposed to the bright yellow, which was taking us just a little too far out of the analogous range that I was uh, going for. Some other examples, this is a split complementary scene. Um, so there is the complementary aspect going on, but we're not going directly across to red. We're going to some of its neighbors to get this interesting color palette. This is an example of a split complementary color palette. So we have the greens, which are across from uh, the orangey red and the lighter orange color. So we have some complementary action going on here, but we actually have, uh, you know, it's a little more complex than that. So this is useful in the photograph because it kind of places her and the environment together. It's a cold gray Harvard Square kind of day, and so we, we get this kind of blended action with her in the environment. Her outfit gives us some clues as to what kind of day it is, and then our eye really gravitates towards what is different in the shot. And so we get this interesting pairing between the uh, crazy colors of something we might want to have on a nice warm summer day paired with this clearly wintry day. Um, and the areas of emphasis are kind of equal then between the larger environment, which grabs our attention, but also this 
this area of difference here, uh, which kind of fights the color scheme that we had going on. Just some more examples of color schemes. Here's a triadic color color scheme, just a little bit different than that compl that split complementary that we dealt with. Much more balanced in terms of hitting each range of the color wheel. And you don't always have to stick with three colors or two colors. Here's an example of a tetradic rectangular relationship. Uh, we can complicate things further by talking about the tint of the color. So each one of these colors we have here, we could change the tint, the tone, or the shade. Tint means you're adding white to the color to get from this orange to kind of a beige and into a cream color. Shade would be adding black to go from orange to a brown. And tone would be adding gray, which is actually what I did with that taxi cab uh, shot, bringing the tone more to a subtler tone by adding gray uh, so the color was less vibrant, less kind of in your face. Uh, color is relative. I want to point that out because uh, you may pick a great color on the color wheel to use in Photoshop, but then when you get it into your photo, uh, what can happen is it can change and not be the color you expected. Here's an example of that. These two purple crosses are exactly the same, uh, but depending on what background they're living in, they look like different uh, different hues, actually. Even though if you took a Photoshop color picker, these would be identical. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. And when you have a color that's spanning two colors in the background, uh, you can actually kind of, it feels almost like it's two different lines based on that. Uh, similarly, the context that your color is in affects our perception of it. These are all the same reds, and that's pretty easy to tell, I would say. But the brilliance of the red uh, is much more noticeable on the black background as opposed to on its uh, kind of more analogous color spectrum here. So uh, that's something to keep in mind as well is that your color is uh, its punchiness or its uh, subduedness is going to be affected by what colors are around it. Uh, just a reminder that in the digital world when we're emitting light from a screen as opposed to having light reflected back at us from a page or a billboard or a piece of clothing. Uh, the primary colors are a little bit different. We're not dealing with mixing red, yellow, and blue. We're actually dealing with the additive color model. So red, yellow, and blue as primary colors uh, is the uh, reflected light scenario where uh, if you imagine these as paint on a page, uh, you would have yellow paint where the only color that's being reflected back at you from the from the spectrum of light coming from, say, the sun is yellow. Um, it, with blue, every other color would be absorbed except for the blue. So that's why this is known as reflective or subtractive light, because we're subtracting every color in the spectrum except blue. If we come back to emitted light, we're talking about the additive color model. And so the primary colors in the additive color model are red, blue, and green. And when you mix them in equal parts, you get white. When you mix them, uh, say, in less equal parts, like red and blue, you get magenta, which makes sense to me. Green and blue, you get this kind of uh, cyan or turquoise color. That kind of makes sense to me, too. The one that always confuses me is mixing red and green to get yellow. But that is how colors behave in the additive color model. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind when you're playing with those color sliders in Photoshop. If you want to make something more golden, you may have to bump up both your red and your green slider. So how does this relate to photography? Well, when we have control over our colors, we can create kind of a story with the color. You can either make things more harmonious, more comfortable, or more disruptive by using uh, very different, say, complementary colors. Um, so when we art direct photos like fashion shoots and things like that, when we choose our props, our background, you can decide which color scheme is going to fit your goals best. Um, we can affect that in lighting and the color settings within the camera. And even when you don't have control over the colors in front of your camera, you can uh, either choose to omit those colors by reframing uh, or include colors based on where you point your camera and where you place your subject. And then there's also the adjusting that we do in post-production in programs like Photoshop, uh, where we can put some of this color theory into work uh, to get the story told that we want to tell. So thanks for watching today, and I look forward to seeing you in class next time.